Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, we're going to be doing a lot of pro end game review. Because if I really had to think about it, I sat down, I'm like, what video should I make today? What's going to help the viewers the most? It's genuinely end game. Guys, before today's video starts, if you want to support the creator on your screen right now so I can continue to post free, valuable content on YouTube, then check out the first links in the description. The first one offers one on one private coaching with myself, where you can get better at Fortnite at a rapid rate and learn what your mistakes are from a professional. And the second link offers a esports grade mouse from one click mouse.com this is my very own gaming brand that i have actually created myself and if you want a high quality mouse but at an affordable price you could buy the aspire pro to use to compete to practice to play tournaments and i really think that this is something that you guys will like so check out one click mouse.com and now back to the video Let's watch these games and you know we're really going to be focusing on fourth zone and onwards so i'm just going to be skipping every game early game mid game doesn't matter i don't care we're going to rapid fire just get to the end game and then i'm just going to list off as many good things that i see about these pros and what they're doing to consistently get to that end game and you know this video will just be a compilation of tips and tricks that will help your end game get better super super quickly so watch this video to the end and i really do predict your end game will be really really good for chapter four especially with these pros showing us exactly Exactly how it's done i did mute the stream this is boob stream by the way shout out to boob he's obviously a very very popular streamer in eu and he does a bunch of viewing parties with pro scrims and this is very very helpful for us to learn from because this footage is really really difficult to get otherwise that's for yeah, this is for zone. okay so let's watch it from we'll skip ahead a little bit more watch it from like right here this is good all right solid game one okay and essentially we're just gonna watch it and then try to name out like as many good things as possible from the vod review okay so <clears throat> And obviously, this sort of uh, replay will skip through a bunch of people. So we're not actually VOD reviewing Vino and Queezy. We're not actually VOD reviewing one specific team. We're VOD reviewing what these pros in general do to help them in endgame. Let's watch this. Uh, they're using balloons, which is interesting. Um, I don't think you need to worry too, too much about this. But if you have them, like, sure. Is it the augment that they use? Like, <laughs> it's very interesting. Regardless, the main advice that I want to give is this dead side rotate right here. They essentially just slide down towards the right. And Anas able to, you know, tarp ahead for his teammate. And then they probably build on to the mountain later on at some point. Um, but they, this dead side rotate is probably really good because it keeps them safe. Yes, they sort of have to invest mats, you know, to tarp. But um, unfortunately, that's just the reality. Cami dies. So that's interesting. So here's a key tip. If you're getting focused already, already, this is the first tip of the, the video, right? If you're getting shot at already, do not use the hammer as a response. Because... You're stuck in the animation, right? Like, Kami is mid-animation. He cannot build. He cannot do anything else except complete the animation. And so what's very important is, like, don't commit to the animation if you're getting shot at. Because you will definitely, even if you don't get beamed mid-animation like this, while you're mid-air, you'll take unnecessary damage. So you should continue to build and sort of box up, maybe two, three boxes. And then when they stop to reload or de-aggro completely, just then that, that's the window. That's, the, that's when you want to use the hammer, right? So this is a mistake. Obviously, he's kind of sort of panic hammering but that's okay this is something that this is a new item a bunch of people are just going to learn about it and try to get good really 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 fast but um i'm sure i'm sure that you know cami would play that differently if you had a choice to do it aqua's completely out of match he's very low hp i don't predict that he's going to survive very long especially in a lobby full of pros so he's probably screwed um but let's try to look for more things that like these guys are doing to help them succeed so you know, increase the on height, as I said. So they do this V-shape to connect and then try to get ahead. They don't necessarily have to connect in front of Seti because he's really, really far. Also, Zone's not actually going in that direction. If you think about where Zone's going, it's going over here. So they'll pressure him, right? Because, like, they're kind of scared of Seti because of the, you know, he might crank up or whatever. But then Queezy's just going to go out to the right. Like, there's no reason to connect over there. That's not really front side of Zone. That's one thing. Um, but not that important. Because a lot of you guys won't even care about height. I really want to focus on, like, mid-ground tips and tricks. I will mention height tips and tricks as I see them, but... Uh, it's not that important. So Seti needs to reposition. Oh, they got chopped out. They got chopped out. So they have... Oh, they're holding shockwaves. So the impulse grenades are probably used for, like, cranking up. Like, you can honestly retake with them if you think about it. Like, you throw one at your foot, you drag walls up, and you could probably take, like, two to three blocks of height. I don't know what happened to them. I actually want to go back, because this is very interesting. Like, what happened to them? They had height. They had the game. It was really, really solid. And then something happened that, like, completely screwed them over. Completely. So they got chopped out, that's first. I think the mistake is uh, Queasy was too focused on Seti. What he needs to do is the prioritization. I imagine, I wish I could go drone free right here, but I can't. Uh, Queasy just needs to connect to the top right. Like, whoever is front side of zone, he needs to go down and connect. Like, where Floki is, if you just saw him, so we're towards the right. Like, see this brick build right here? If Queasy goes down and connects there, right, I think he's fine. But because he doesn't, and, and they're, focused, they're both focused on Seti, they kind of lose awareness of what's happening around them, and then someone chops them out from the back right but if they double connect like if they connect front side then they're fine they waste a lot of mass trying to re-establish height 
Uh, and then gets impulse out. I don't know what happened there. That's very interesting. Either impulse out or hammered. Like, something happened there. Queezy gets a nice kill. I don't imagine Queezy and, and Vino are going to win this game until something drastic happens. Vino actually gets a huge impact. He just needs to get up safely and he, he's chilling, no? And then Queezy dies. I don't know what happens here. Uh, I think Vino finds a lot of mats, by the way. Let's see. No, let's just siphon. That's actually unfortunate. Okay, so they don't win at all. But something happens to Queezy that we can't really figure out like what happened, but whatever. Uh, they, they didn't have a big chance of winning either way. This is the part where people are like dying, right? Like this is where you get like to 10th and the 15th. And so it's very important to progress past this point in order to succeed, right? So obviously like think about it this way. The people that took height from Vino and Queezy, they probably got an impact that gave them mats. And then that actually gave them a lot of sort of leverage to take height because then they know they have more mats than the height team, right? So if we just quickly look at how many mats um, the height team has, I think they're about to show them right about here. Loki just dying actually. Yeah, look, look. 400 wood, 300 brick from Chico. And then his teammate Malad probably has like 500 wood. They definitely got an impact. They There's no way they could have made it to this point without that. So they got an impact. They got the, the resources from that team that they killed. And then they took height. If you want to take height in order to get a top two placement, take it with leverage. Like if you find yourself lucky enough to get that kill in mid game, find yourself looking for height. That's what you need to do, right? Look for height, try to take it from them. You probably have more mats, you know, like try to take advantage of the fact that they're unaware. So a couple things, a lot of people to this day, for some reason, even though visual audio has been out for a while, they don't use it enough in end game. Like it's on their screen, but they don't use it to actually look back and figure out where are people? Is there someone in storm behind me? You could figure these things out. Don't listen anymore. Look at the visual audio, right? Because obviously listening is a little bit sort of um, inaccurate because there's so much going on. Like try not to listen so much and try to look on your screen and you'll have visual audio. We don't see it because it's a replay, but on Bray's screen, obviously he's able to see it. He continues to challenge because if you really think about it, let's let's try to ask ourselves the question, is this a good fight to take? They hit them a decent amount. Did Frey and his teammate get hit? The answer is no, right? Because Frey is full, full HP and the bottom left, his teammate is still full HP, right? And so because they did some damage, um, it, it is in their interest to continue for two reasons. They have HP advantage, but also they have the necessity for an impact. They need to go for this. After this, there's no other impact they're going to find, right? Like they have four builds. I imagine his teammate is low on math, so they need to take this. This is their win condition, right? And so they go for some damage, they get the knock and they find some mats back here as well off his teammate. It's really, really good. So Japco runs forward. Unfortunately, he doesn't build above his head, even though he totally should have. Honestly, he's running full out in the open. It's not like he's hugging a wall or anything that's cutting line of sight. He's running in the open. That's sort of very, very vulnerable to even, let alone height, a lot of angles, right? If you're not hugging builds, if you're not close to another build, it's very easy to be seen by everyone. Like not only high, but everyone can see him right here. And so he should totally just build a couple cones above him. And I think it'll be easier for sure. He doesn't even need to build his sides, right? Like he doesn't even need to build walls on his side because there's not really anyone on that layer. That he's still alive? What? I always said he's still alive. That, that's what I would love to know. Honestly. That he's using his HP as a resource. He's trying to get Frey to come out first so he can shoot him in the back, right? Because if you're low HP, it's very common that people in this scenario, like 19 HP and Storm's coming in like half a second. Very common for people in this scenario to run out. What Sadie's waiting for to happen is Frey above him to run out of his box and then take the challenge on him later, right? But he doesn't have mats. Like Sadie does one build. So he's just using his HP as a resource, trying to wait for Frey. Frey uses some sort of mobility to get ahead. Uh, so he's safe. And I think... The game's over for side of you. <laughs> yeah, he's so dead. Okay. Here's the key thing. From our perspective here, it very much looks like, hey, Frey should have just taken this. He has HP advantage. You have to also understand two things. Frey is one shot himself. And also, Frey doesn't know the HP of this person. We're in replays. Those two things, okay? So in this case, Frey does the absolute best thing and realizes that Sadi is on a timer. Sadi is the one who has to move first. So if Frey is the one that plays patient. And the reason for this is, by the way... Storm's going to hit Sadi first. Storm is going to pressure Sadi out of his position way faster than Frey has to move, right? And so because of that, Frey just needs to play really patient. Sadi will do one of two things. He will either run into his box and then give Frey the free kill, or he'll run away. And if he runs away, then Frey can come up with a different answer. He had the hammer. He could use that as mobility, but just play patiently, right? Just don't force anything. You're one shot too. You know, 60 HP doesn't necessarily mean you have an HP advantage over Sadi if you knew his HP. You're also one pumpable. Somehow found sight. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Okay, how to prevent what just happened to Frey? Okay, this is so, so easy, by the way, but it's hard to be disciplined enough to, like, do it all the time. So, he gets height, which is good. He is low HP, which is also, like, not... That's not ideal, obviously. He only has eight builds. 
what he needs to do here is exactly what I've seen clicks do all the time, right? Which is place a floor on top of the stair. Now, let me try to explain. This is going to be hard, but this is good. Let me try to explain why that's important. The only vulnerable angles that he could get shot at from low ground is not this direction, which he's looking at, but also he has a wall, right? So like no one can low ground peek him from here. And the right, he has a wall, right? So instead of finishing the walls and try to finish like left wall, back wall, if he just stands on a floor, all those low ground peak angles from the back and the back left are no longer available to the enemies that are chasing him, right? Because he's standing on a floor. Like a floor is really hard to shoot from below, whereas there's a stair you could shoot at from this direction, right? So that's what you need to understand. It's like immediately, as soon as you're on top of a stair, place the floor immediately. No one on your side, because you're on height, there's no one on your lair, so you're safe, and no one above you, so you're fine. Just block underneath. And the best way to do that is to just stand on a floor. And don't stand on a floor like over here. Like don't place the floor here. Place it here on top of the stair. Um, not only is that faster, but it, it's also better because if you place it here, someone can mantle onto the stair from here. It's just harder, right? So like try to place it immediately on the stair and then he never gets shot from this low ground angle that someone chases him after, right? I think we can find a couple more tips here in this final final fight. I imagine it's a 2v2. So let's try to look at this, okay? So like 2v2 is a very common scenario. So let's go back and try to review this again. After Frey dies, it's a 2v2 between height and low ground. And so let's try to, let's try to see the situation, right? Combat is out of mats. Relvis is his teammate, so they're both low ground, kind of chilling. And what they should do is most likely... Uh, they don't have the mats, right? So it's very... It's actually a tough situation for low ground. Low ground. Low ground's not supposed to win here, honestly. They're not at all supposed to win. High ground should win. Um, Malad dropped down and makes a completely horrible mistake. I don't think he should have done that. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. Like, he drops down way too far. And pretty much gives the win to comeback, I think, right? The comeback in Relvis is team low ground, right? He drops. I don't know how. Either he got shot down or drops way too much. This is the mistake that will most likely lose them the game. Luckily for him, Malad's getting his teammate to pressure a lot. So Malad survives long enough, and I think they should win. Yeah. But it, it was the only reason it was close is because Malad dropped down that far, right? If Malad actually just takes the time and maintains height and goes down like two blocks above the low ground team and then whittled him down slowly, that's probably a free win, especially because of the fact that like low ground team doesn't even have any mats left. So that's what he should do. Um, but other than that, pretty good win for them what i would ask is someone in the comments to redo all these tips put them in a list like 1 to 20 or whatever amount of tips we end up in this video um and just like summarize it for the people in the comments so that after someone watches the video they can just go back to the comments and be like okay like this is what i forgot this is what i need to remember if someone does it by the way and does it pretty well i'll pin it the, the, the comment will show up at the top okay vico and aqua on height uh vico and aqua are, are trying out so that's really cool i think they have the potential to do really really well because Vico's a demon and Aqua's really, really smart. And also has great mechanics regardless. Beautiful shot. <laughs> Thunder, guys. Guys, if I there's one tip of the new chapter that I must tell you is uh, don't use the Maven. It sucks. Okay, use the Thunder. Maven is good off spawn if you don't have anything else. But then, like, if you had a Thunder off spawn, you would pick up the Thunder. You know what I mean? Like, so that's what I would recommend. Like, don't use the Maven. You'll notice, like, first moving is really quiet. This is usual. There's not really that many fighting opportunities in first moving what i would recommend is like try to sort of be the same if you have a lot of mats just be kind of chill try to save as many mats while remaining safe use these strategies like seti is right now seti and kemi have low ground they don't have to build on the floor they can break through builds uh and it's a really really safe layer because it's going downhill this is really nice for them so they're continuing to build if they can connect into that brick tarp down there at the very bottom if zone double pulls forward like if it goes in the same direction as first moving did they're gonna be in a really good spot i really hope that happens so i can show you an example of it um Really, really horrible example of what you should do to get an impact, by the way. Look at this. So I I don't I don't like this for several reasons. Number one, left hand peak. Number two, it's a really, really open angle. There's several problems here, right? This wall is not placed. This floor is not placed. You can place a cone here instead of a stair, honestly. Uh, that covers and solves the issue. And then this wall on the left is completely open. It almost looks like it's pre- I don't- that's not a pre-edit. So this wall is just completely open. You can solve that, right? And so his teammate dies if you just look here. <laughs> Typo dies. And it's- it's- oh wow, it's from behind actually. But regardless, um, those- those mistakes should be fixed. I don't think you should pressure on that, that sort of angle regardless. I'm trying to figure out like why they were able to surprise him so well. I think they just sort of crouch walk behind. Yeah. Oh, they didn't block their back. They didn't block their back. It, none of it was blocked off. Let's say you have a tarp. Okay. And I think this is exactly what happened to that team. Let's say this is your tarp. Let's say this is where they were in that example that I just showed you. Right. And so in this example, it doesn't matter if you block your tarp. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it on the webcam. 
let's say you block and tarp all the way back here, right? And like, these are the tiles, right? Like really, really far back. This doesn't matter because what can happen is whoever's following your tarp can break this without giving you an audio cue, right? Like, let's say someone's following your tarp. Maybe they tarp around here and then they connect their tarp to yours and then they break in, right? Them breaking this wall doesn't really do you any favors. It doesn't help you. It doesn't give you an audio cue. So you're going to be completely unaware when they sneak up next to you, right? So they didn't block anything close. What you should do is when you pause and sort of slow down, that's when you should block, right? So their wall really should have been right here. Because then when they break it, and you can also place layers, right? So you can place these two walls plus stair if you're really trying to be careful. But usually when you're going for an impact opportunity or a double spray, that's the most important time that you should be blocking off your back. That's genuinely the most important time. Because usually what you'll notice is like, if you're trying to go for an impact, that's when your awareness is at an all-time low because you're so focused on something else, right? So it's very difficult to be aware of your back direction. This is when it's very important to actually place these close walls, right? If you really just look at it, I'm trying to sort of figure this out for sure. Yeah, they didn't have a wall. They just placed that back wood wall, right? Uh, and so that's why they sort of uh, mess up there. Regardless of that whole explanation, what it, what it actually ended up being, I don't like their their impact opportunity regardless. I don't think like missing out on those walls is like a safe opportunity. Uh, maybe they could have went on the right wall. Maybe there's a reason for that. We don't have the full contact because we were not able to watch them the whole time. But uh, regardless, we have a team on height. Boop is just switching through everyone. Holy moly. <laughs> This is a stream, by the way, so I'm not controlling any of this. Daddy and Kemi are doing great on Logar. Look how peaceful it is here, right? So this is what happens when it goes slightly downhill. If the terrain changes like this, like let's say zone's going this way. I've talked about this many, many times. If the terrain's going like this, you just need to continuously keep going down until your bottom layer. Now you don't force this. Like if, if you're if you're the second height team, this is hard to force. You force it if you see the opportunity and you, you, you see that it's free. Because then it's a, it's a really, really good position. You'll notice how uncongested their layer is because it's really hard to congest a layer that just was introduced recently to the game. Um, uh, they were very susceptible here, by the way, uh, to the, the exact thing that we just talked about. So when they tarped ahead this far, uh, their tarp is really, really open and all these are wood walls. So I think they just need to reset a couple walls, make sure. Or they, they just need to stick together uh, and they do that to get a kill. So that was really good. Uh, and they're doing amazing. So this is a very good concept as well as double tarping what this allows you to do is if the zone is small enough let's say the zone is actually this small okay and let's say a, a box is this big i'm trying to show you relativity like how big the zone is um if you double tarp forward like this is what they're trying to do right and then you save all these builds like you save this mat this mat this mat this mat and this mat and you only double tarp like you place your roof and your sidewalls it's not actually that much more expensive like think about it right if we watch it from like a into the page perspective left wall right here your roof right here and then right wall right here this is a single tarp right or a double tarp rather is left wall roof roof right wall not that much more expensive this is three builds this is four builds but the benefit of this is you know on, i'm going to try to go back to the exact example right here no one can build on your layer because you're threatening them with edits right now as compared to a single box right here another team could totally contest you on low ground by just tarping here Right? So what, what it allows you to do is without investing too many more mats, you're controlling the whole layer. Notice how this is only possible with second zone, third moving, fourth moving onwards. Like you can't do this in first moving. The zone is so big that you double tarping doesn't really influence the low ground at all. Like it's too big. Like they can just tarp next to you anyways, even though you double tarp or triple tarp, it doesn't matter. And it's, it's just, at that point, it's just too expensive. Do this when the zone is smaller and you really, really want to control low ground. Zone pulls. Let's see what they do in this sort of situation. I can't really tell which way it's going. I think they can still maintain low ground and get top two. So like I said before in multiple other videos, really, really important to actually play low ground. It's important to recognize in this meta, hammer is really, really useful to grief high ground. They can chop you out really easily using the hammer, which is why I was talking about the hammer earlier. If it's still in the game, high ground's a little risky for that reason. As long as you can find a way to maintain high ground, regardless of the hammer, then sure, you can play it which I'm sure Vino and Queezy and Aqua and Vico are going to be the teams that figure that out first. Um, they are very much the Zayton staff of this era in EU. So that's very interesting. So Seti and Kami are... Kami's dead. Seti tries to go for a Hail Mary play because he's in a 1v2 situation. There's not much he could do, but you'll notice what Logan has brought them. This looks like a failure at first place. Yo, Kami died and then Seti just died to the last team. They got second place. And the reason they got second place is because of their second moving play, first moving play of taking low ground and understanding the terrain and what it means for them, right? If the zone is going slightly downhill and you're in a position to actually take low ground, 
take it and play the exact same way Kemi and Seti played. If you want to understand how to do this better, rewatch this game too more and try to figure out like what did Kemi and Seti do specifically to help them take low ground and also keep it. Double tarping in lower, you know, smaller circles is really, really good. Making sure you're constantly following the terrain. So you're constantly going lower and lower. If you see old builds in front of you, break into them. They save mats. These things are really, really good. Old builds. Also, another note about old builds is really important. They are full HP. They're very, very reinforced, especially if it's brick or metal. And so they're really, really good opportunities for you to sort of cement yourself into the layer that you've chosen. And if you have a low ground layer in a game that's sort of low ground dependent or like, you know, beneficial for low ground, and then absolutely you should be taking low ground old builds and try to play in them because then it's really hard for someone to come in and force you out. Immediate tip right away, ice. Ice is really, really good for rotates. The reason why you can use wood on ice is because as you're fast fast tarping as i like to say or fast rotating you can use wood because by the time someone shoots out of your wood wall you're not there anymore you're in the next tile or the two tiles or three tiles in front of it so don't waste your hard mats on that sort of scenario you don't need to use wood the common advice that i give in order to like succeed in end game like yo have a ton of mats and you know end game uh, it doesn't really apply in pro scrims because everyone's doing the same thing and so it's really hard to sort of manage surge manage rotates when everyone else is playing at a high quality really good position for savage the reason is is because it's about to go downhill and also they have low ground so this is really really good good impact opportunity attempt but i think they should stop now because they haven't really got enough damage on them rough guard and hellfire are really aware at this point because they try to attempt uh, impact here so they should just leave this be don't continue to go in for the same impact the question is to drop or not to drop my answer is to drop two layers drop one or two layers don't drop all the way because if the zone double pulls back it's really hard to get back up right so they're scared to drop and i agree because you have to understand zone the end zone is really close and so if zone pulls anywhere back towards the cliff you're screwed if you committed to the drop so you can't commit to the drop if you want to drop and sort of have a free layer you can drop one or two layers max but do not drop all the way i, I think dropping all the way is bad unless you like are absolutely forced maybe you're a solo that like needs a safe area sure but they can't drop this is a good layer you see they're, they're dropping all the way i think this is okay i think they saved a ton of mats out of it also they're kind of forced to you have to realize they kind of forced you they're not in a good situation so their answer is kind of correct no, they, they kind of have to. Yeah, they can't tarp to the zone. They have to. So they do this at, not out of, like, you know, they would have loved to do this. It's not an ideal scenario. Savage can't tarp to end zone with seven builds. So he has to walk. And so this is forced. And so they, they build some sort of low ground base here. Uh, his duo literally has one build. And now they, in total, they have one build, like, as a team. Um, so <laughs> they're, they're pretty much forced. You'll notice how the rest of the lobby doesn't follow. No, really, in video might also have be out of mats. And so they're forced to drop as well. Maybe they saw the impact opportunity on the wood team underneath them, which was Savage, and then they go for that instead. Who knows, right? We can't really see their mats. Everyone's super, super scuffed here. You'll, you'll see this. This is very cool. And at the zone pulled back. So everyone who dropped is probably screwed. I mean, I'm sure they dropped because they were forced to, right? But if anyone's on low ground with like a ton of mats, then they definitely made a mistake. But these guys on low ground are probably forced. They need to get back up somehow. Yeah, ton, uh, Vino and, and, and Queezy are, are very much out of mats. They need to fight this team. No one, Neither of these teams can get up without getting the siphon mats of the other team. That's their win condition here. All right, so they have to kill them. I don't think you can get up. Unless you mantle your way up. It's impossible, yeah. You have to get on top of maybe. Oh, he does have the hammer. He can totally find a good angle and hammer up. Yep, really good. I think Queezy's just going to die. Yeah, it's just reality. So he has to solo clutch. Ooh, wow. Wow, he has got that kill and and he he got rewarded for it too. I'm shocked that this worked. I'm like, he's playing a little bit aggressive here. Um <laughs> I'm like, doesn't he have cover from height like up here? Like I'm like I'm, like this isn't a nice spot to chill in, right? And shoot them from this angle, but he goes for the commit and then hits a shot. He's very healthy too, so like this is actually a good play. Kind of cool that way. And then he gets out, notices the, the duo aggressing him. He builds layers. He builds the wall and the stair in case the wall's taken first try. That's good. And then he goes back up. Really, really good movement by Vino. Like, I cannot believe he survived to this point. It is really, really good by him. Um, I love, I love, love, love the fact that he went after the kill, after the second kill. Um, goes into, like, he aggresses this guy. Immediately blocks his head because he just saw someone shooting from height. So he immediately blocks his head. And then what's key is, like, after going for the shot, he's like... And he realizes the shot no longer exists. He just blocks his head and then goes around towards the back instead of continuing up here because height can see this angle, right? Like this area is where the area that height's spraying and pressuring at. And so if you go backwards into the back, height can no longer see you. And then he breaks into old builds, which is really, really safe, right? Like this is a safe spot from height. If you can go around to the right, I think this should be okay. Right was actually, I think, better. But I think this zone, I don't know. 
if he could probably play this differently, I, like, isn't Wright nut? Like, Wright has to be good here. I, I don't think Wright's in zone. That's the, yeah, Wright's no, yeah, you can't go down this lane down here because it's not in zone. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. That's fine. The old build sort of tactic is really key. If you're trying to solo clutch or in general, you don't have a lot of mats and you find opportunity to get inside old builds that no longer exist to people in the game. Like whoever owns these old builds is probably dead, right? And so he just, he just like, he feels safe playing in them. It's a really good way to have mats without actually building them, right? Like you, you've essentially made your turn. Oh, he makes a mistake, gets in the box. Uh, let's see. He probably didn't even know Malibu is here because they're not making any noise. They're just rezzing. And so then he tries to aggress on a team because, you know, Vino's out of mats. He's trying to go for a play. Oh, that's such unfortunate timing. I think uh, Teeny should totally aggress on this team. Teeny is... Uh... Oh, no, he's going to play Splashes. He's going to play Splashes. Everyone's so scuffed in this lobby, dude. Everyone's so scuffed. So it's a 2v1v2, I believe. Malibuka is a duo. Teeny is a solo. And then there's a duo up above. Yeah. And so if Teeny wants uh, second place, I think he needs to go down. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was gonna say he just needs to go down into the cliff, no? Like go on a layer that no one would dare chase him. Like this is a good spot. He d like shouldn't he just chill down here? I think these the reason why he didn't, by the way, is because it's a one way um glider thing. Like this one way glider doesn't let him come back. You see how how he's trying to go back? It doesn't let him because these um air tunnel, wind tunnels, or whatever, they're one way, right? And like you can only go in one direction. So that kind of screwed him over. I I'm surprised they don't turn these off in if so and onwards. It's gonna screw a lot of people over. It's gonna be a complaint and I, I hope they change it later on. Um, but I genuinely think if you want to know a strategy for solos, is like go on a layer, like although it might kill you, it will buy you a lot of time. Like let's say that wind tunnel wasn't there, right? And so in that case, Teeny would do really good by being down here. Even though it might kill him in like 20 seconds because then he's forced to run into a wall and doesn't have the build to get back up, sure. But it's going to put him in a situation where a duo would not dare to chase him. And then hopefully the duos above will fight and then force them into a situation where it's like the 2v1 at the end. And then at least Teeny gets the second place, right? One thing, if you guys don't know yet, that I will mention is pads are still in the game. Uh, the only way you can get them is supply drops though. So that is the thing, right? So, hammer is a really good form of mobility. If you can find double hammer, that's really, really good. But that's kind of hard to find. Um, so, it's not really a mobility meta, if that makes sense, in duos. Because if you only have one hammer, it's kind of hard uh, to use that in a duo setting. Because what is your duo going to do? They, they're just going to tarp ahead. You might as well just tarp together, right? So, it's really good if you have double hammer. But if you don't have double hammer, it's pretty tough. So, that's what I would recommend. Like, try to play if, with uh, double hammer. Play for supply drops if they're free. Uh, but most of the time, it's going to be pretty hard, honestly. Uh, Babuka's dead, Thomas HP sprinting on uh, sort of the roofs of everyone. Kind of chills in this pocket right here. I call these pockets, by the way. These pockets are really good because whoever sort of walks in front of you will not... It's like a blind spot. They won't check behind them. Let's say someone drops onto this cone from above. Such a nice angle for Thomas to actually shoot them in, right? Because no one's going to expect him to be in that, like, half box. Another tip to sort of mention, sort of, you know, on a tangent off that tip is if you make a full box, everyone knows you're in there. If you make a, like, half scuff build in wood because it builds quickly as well, uh, people will not know you're there. It's very difficult. And so these spots as well that Thomas is running on is like against the wall. If you're hugging a wall, it limits line of sight really, really well. So the, the movement of Thomas, the decisions he's making in terms of where to go is really, really good. This impact is absolutely fantastic. I cannot believe this. Like, not that it worked, but like the fact that Thomas actually go, like has the ball to go for this. Um, it's really good. Half broken wood wall, knocked body in the build. This guy's not looking at him. Perfect scenario to commit. Don't try to replace. It's too slow get in chances are you'll be able to get the shot on them before they're even able to react just don't miss and you'll get you'll get the impact he should go for the other body too he has splashes to, su to supplement that the body dropped i'm sure i'm sure he knows it's down there i don't know i think he no i i, I like this play actually it, it's tough to say i i don't know this this is not an easy decision not an easy decision because it's like there's siphon mats down there you have splashes it takes about two to three more ticks to storm right is the mats worth the hp probably right Maybe he's in the moment and he doesn't recognize that, like, the body drop. Who knows, right? <clears throat> I do think he should go for that body. Well, whatever. Nice. He notices the awareness, right? He notices that they're both looking at him. He literally just got shot from them. Didn't get hit, obviously. He placed the wall in time. That was good. But then he just disappears. Like, screw that. I don't want to play with that anymore, right? Makes sense? Like, he doesn't care about them anymore. So he tries to leave. Like, don't go after someone that's fully aware that you're there. That's not a fair fight. Take unfair fights in your favor. Which is exactly how we got that impact in the first place, right? Hammer does really good. Uses a hammer. Hammer is really, really good for solo clutches, by the way. Hammer is very much a solo item. 
I, I would say the only time hammer is the do item if you have two, which is really rare. Cami and Seti somehow found a way to like get to, which I'm sure they have like these strats to consistently do it. But uh, Cami and Seti, by the way, are very notorious for having strategies that are like very unique and they've practiced it a lot. Back in the day when the dub shotgun was in the game, they actually used that very extensively. Like back when I played competitive, I pretty much copied their strategy off of them, right? Like I bought it with them, noticed that they did it and then just took their strategy. It was the easiest season of all time. Just to just use the dove seed, dove, you know, like you didn't even have to rotate. Like it was so easy. But um, regardless, like they're very notorious for creating these unique strategies. Uh, let's go back here. Kami does really good to sort of spray out that wall that uh, that he made. Or I don't even think it was his wall. So he, he tries to aggress here. I wonder, I wonder, I do want to ask this question. I wonder if it would be better for him to actually get a little bit closer before committing to this. Yes, that guy's getting shot at, but he doesn't do enough damage here. 63. He could totally do max. Right, and so I think he should wait longer. This this could have been a kill like sooner, right? I think he gets the kill anyways. No, he doesn't get the kill. It's stolen by the other team. But I think he, like you have to recognize very much like Thomas HD does. If Cami waits a little bit longer, like a literal two second delay, even if Hellfire knows Cami is coming, he can't really do anything. He's getting sprayed from in front, right? But I, you know, if I had to guess, I don't think Hellfire is aware of that. You know, Cami's behind them, so Cami should take advantage of that fact and get a little bit closer. Use the shotgun in its effective range and do 150 to him. Like then that that's a free kill. Free kill, it's your siphon, it's the loot's in your box, right? Like, these things are important. So hitting 63 and then giving away the fact that you're behind him for 63 damage doesn't seem like a worthwhile trade. It seems more worthwhile to, like, wait, get closer, and then pump him for 150. Even if you're hogging him, I don't think Hellfire would react. Also, it's in your benefit to be in the same box as him if you get the first shot, because then 50-50s are favorable for the guy who has more HP. So Cami should be in the same box when he goes for that shot, right? So I think that's important. 2v2 scenario, I think. No, it's a 2v1v1, uh, 2v1v2 again. Lixie's sort of lurking here. Beautiful movement by him, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Should get that finish. Oh, that's unfortunate. He should just give up that. I don't think he's ever winning that, right? Because he's hurt. He should go for the finish, not for the siphon, but for the points. And so that would help. <laughs> unfortunate. But really good shot by him. Uh, if Okay, let's talk about like what the duo should have done. How should the duo have played this? Uh, the problem is they're trying to pinch him. Isn't it obvious Flixie's out of mats? And so the best sort of course of action is to group up. They should come out from this side together. And that way, when Flixie goes for the shot, he gets punished. Because the reason why Flixie doesn't get shot right away is because Cruel just went for an edit. And so when you go for an edit, you have to pull out your gun. And that gives that delay where you can't shoot right away. If his teammate's behind him in duos, that delay is no longer true for the teammate. Because, you know, teammate A is the person who edited. Teammate B is the guy with the gun out. You're able to punish this guy right away. If you don't want to get punished in this sort of fashion, don't split up. This is good. Distra drops on this side. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce him. Sorry for butchering it. But he drops on this side. What should immediately happen is the other teammate dropping on the other side. And that would help a lot. Uh, but the timing is a little bit off there. I wonder, I think, I think they should win. Oh, he's so many mats. Wait, he can actually win. He can actually win. He can actually win. This is very clutchable. Very quite. He should walk on the cones. He wasted so many mats there. He should totally walk on the cones. I don't know why he did that. There's no need. But I think, honestly, uh, I see why he's rushing to zone. He's, he's out of HP. So if he goes on the cones and tries to 50-50 AR, he doesn't have the time to win the game. So I don't know. It's kind of tough. It's really tough to say. But like, the, on the flip side, you can use your med miss while you're on the cones and then like use the rest of it, 85. Use the rest of it, then fire. I don't know. I I, I think it, I think it's a tough situation. Did I see splashes? Yeah, splashes. Did he take them? Oh, it's only one. It's only one. Unironically, I think Zestin actually has the advantage if those splashes were like four splashes. You could actually win the game, which is crazy. That's so cool though. That's why I love competitive. It's like these scenarios where you, it looks like he's at the disadvantage, it's like 1v2. He could actually win. But unfortunately, he doesn't. Unfortunately, he doesn't. I don't think he made that big of a mistake. He has 35 HP. He has to go for a Hail Mary play. It totally makes sense. I, I totally understand. Hey, last game, guys. Last game. Hello, Archie. Pro scrims play out very differently. There's a lot more fighting. Like fighting is a very important skill in pro scrims because of the fact that like you do need good mechanics and good edits and good decisions in terms of fighting when it gets to this level because everyone's scuffed and then you're forced to fight. Like if you just make good decisions, you'll you'll be in unfavorable situations all the time. Unfavorable meaning it's an unfair advantage for you. Like you'll be in the benefit. Uh, and I think that's really, really good. It's a good way to get out of low elo, honestly. It's like just make good decisions all the time. Uh, and that way you're not forced into a situation where you have to mechanically perform extremely well to get out of it, right? Uh, I think that's that's how you should think about the game if you're uh, not a pro. It's important to be methodical about your gameplay at a lower elo. I think that's a pro scrim thing because it's necessary. It's, you do it out of necessity. Oh, wow. He's, he doesn't know the HP. Nice. Okay.
good kill so uh reason he jumps in by the way is the mac count he has five wood builds so it makes he's unironically safer in this guy's box uh also <clears throat> watch how vico plays this scenario right in the in the stair he's just cross a lot like the only way he loses and obviously he does, oh he does know the hp he does know the hp he does know the hp he's the one who did the damage okay okay so he does so much damage there so he knows he's low he knows he's under 50 hp he gets in and then cross here because Vico's 120 and so that's one pumpable and so he's trying to play careful he's trying to fake him out trying to do some like tricks here and then eventually just the guy edits the guy actually edited at a good time if if flood actually hit a shot here i think Vico dies for sure but he misses flood flood axe i don't know how to pronounce his name god damn it bro why do you guys have names like this yeah he misses that's unfortunate also Vico should not pick x i think that's bad uh use ar because that way at least if the guy edits at that moment when you're spraying you still have a usable gun right <clears throat> oh that was cool wait 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 wait. that's so cool he went vertically that's actually interesting how did he do that let's try to figure this out what hello i'm so confused how did he just do that guys if you know how to do this leave it in the comments i'm actually gonna i need to know this actually <laughs> hello that's very useful to know someone try to figure this out if, if you can figure this out like do it please because out of mass he's on a good layer uh he needs to win this fight he's winnable okay he just got shot in the back someone's on his layer shooting at him or height yeah there you go vino vino comes out from the other direction kills him unfortunately queasy, go queasy goes down vino is one hp which is unfortunate i wish you could figure out like, what went wrong there but just most likely a duo just aggressing him and let's see yeah hydra just gets a nasty shot on him he's one hp Duo, it is in the duo's interest to just end this fight and fight him specifically because they have knowledge of his HP. And so they should just, yeah, they should just fight him. You win that every single time. There's nothing Vino could have done there. <clears throat> Not much you could do. Okay, it is a 2v2 at this point. And Hydra's teammate goes down. Oh, this is winnable. This is winnable. This is winnable. This is so winnable. He needs to get in zone. He needs to get in zone. He needs to get in zone. Oh, no. No, okay, so let's, this is a very interesting... These scenarios are super cool, by the way. I love these. These, like, last sort of clutch situations. The, w the win condition in your head has to update fast, right? And so, like, it's very difficult to sort of uh, think about it in these moments, which is why it's so impressive when someone does something cool in these sort of situations. Like, if someone comes up with the right decision in a really fast sort of manner, I'm very impressed because it's hard, right? The pressure is on. Really good low ground peak here. He has two hammers. I wonder if you could use both uh, or if they have the same charge because I think... Silver surfers, like the way they work is like if you have like one or two, if you have like two of them, they both have the same cooldown. I, I don't know how that works, but regardless, Hellfire blocks the siphon. So he keeps, he keeps refs guard safe and then Hydro just dies. He couldn't, I don't think Hydro can hammer. Hydro needs to run. He needs to run like immediately, but that's so hard to come up with because you're not really keeping track of your HP in this sort of situation. That was a cool, I don't know if you guys caught that, by the way. That was such a cool Excalibur. He has an Excalibur rifle, the guy, the, the, the gun that shoots swords. And then when he sees the gap, after he hammers up, right? He sees the gap to sneak a sword in before the enemy builds. And he, he shoots it on the ground. What he should have done, maybe, was to, like, try to hit someone with it. Because I swear to God, if you hit fire someone with it, it's, like, so much damage. It's winnable, right? Um, so maybe you should aim for that. But I get why he's shooting on the ground at that location. Because, like, he's trying to make sure they get hit by the sword, right? So you, you shoot in the middle. The Hellfire has to come out from Storm. Makes sense. But the, the sword is only 50 damage. If you hit fire Hellfire, he's probably dead. He's probably dead. And the chance of you hitting a headshot is, like, really high. I also think the Excalibur rifle hip fire is really accurate. It's, like, super accurate. Um, so even if you're, like, mid-air jumping, it doesn't matter. Like, that was winnable that way. It's also winnable after you get this kill to just, like, run forward. But, like, really hard situation to win. 1v2. I props to Hydro. He got second place. That's good enough, honestly. This is what I mean, though. Like, try to figure out what tactics in endgame help you get second place. Because, like, although this is important to win, too, the difference between first and second place is, like, six or eight points. It's, like, a good amount of points. But, like, second place is still very, very good. What's bad is 10th place. What's bad is 15th place. Find out what's bad with you getting 15th place and, like, why it's happening. A lot of the reasons I've sort of outlined here with the layers, with the decisions you make, with choosing 2v1s. These are important. And so, like, this video could totally help you. But honestly, guys, I encourage you to do your own research. Watch your own games. Don't watch pros so, so much. Oftentimes, the answer is, like, what are you doing wrong? Don't try to only figure out what are the pros doing right, because chances are you're not going to figure out exactly what's going wrong with your gameplay. Go play some scrims. Go figure out what you're doing wrong. Like, why are you getting 10th instead of 2nd? 
and try to implement that because I think that's the best way to sort of improve your own gameplay is focus targeted practice or VOD review in terms of your own gameplay, right? And if you feel like you don't really understand like what's going wrong with your own gameplay, ask a friend, try to figure out what's going on. Like, like you know, like sit at, sit at it for a while. Don't just give up like, hey, I just watched my replay. I don't know what, what went wrong. Think about it for a bit. Take five minutes and try to think about it for some time. And then if then you still don't really understand or if the answer that you came up with, you're not that confident in, ask a friend, try to ask people, try to watch my videos in general. It could totally help. But in general, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this long, long video. I hope it's helped to some degree. I really hope someone in the comments makes that list of tips. And I would love for you guys to watch the next one. See you guys next time. This video had gone long enough. Peace.